Alexander, welcome. Well, hello, guys. Thank you for having me. Yeah, wie geht's? Alles gut, alles gut. Für euch? Yeah, sehr gut, sehr <laughs> gut. gut. Danke schön. You're the uh, first ever Austrian to receive a D1 scholarship. That's really yeah. cool. Yes, sir. Thank you. All that without that. playing, all that without playing high school football. Yeah, that's impressive, man. Uh, how how did you how did you how did that happen? How did you get that scholarship? For those who are watching, getting a D1 scholarship is really hard to do. Yeah, and it's about forty-seven times harder doing it coming from Europe without playing high school football. Yeah, forty-seven. So how, how, how'd you do it? Well, there. There was um, there was some luck involved. There was a determined will, and um, most importantly, there was a great organization where you learn football really well and um, where you can achieve goals like that. Um, it started. Uh, I was 16 years old, and the under 19 Austrian junior national team recruited me, um, and I started as a right tackle. Uh, we played in Spain in Sevilla in 2008 uh, European Championship, and Austria only made the fifth place. But um, there was an all-star team, and only by coaches back then. And I made that list as a 16-year-old between all those 19, 20-year-olds. And that's when people from the states started to contact me, saying, "Would you be interested in playing collegiate ball?" And I said, "Yes, absolutely." But I'm only 16 years old. So back then I had the process of three years to find out what's an SAT test, what's the NCA clearinghouse, what is the eligibility center, how to translate your grades, how to take the ACT, how to take the TOEFL, how to get all your paperwork ready that when the moment hits and someone wants to recruit you, you can say I'm eligible. Yes. So I had no help. I had no help. I only had a dream. like, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I don't care. I'm going to do this. I'm going there. So... I went to school for civil engineering. It's a technical college and a school where you don't have to go to university afterwards. It goes for five years. You can enter in Austria when you're 15. You graduate normally and you have to write a thesis about construction something. So even there, I got lucky. One of my classes was a earth science laboratory where you measure the pressure that the ground can withstand so you can build a house on it. That got counted as my national science laboratory for the 16 core courses. Wow. So I got lucky in those aspects. And then, of course, the Vienna Vikings hired a linebacker coach, uh, Jared Vanderbeek. He's a Sac State alumni. And um, then he told Chris Kaleke about a defensive guy you might want to sign, Michael Brandon. He was a Sac leader at Sac State. So those two guys came and played for Vienna. That was my first year of 18 years playing for the grown-ups. So they met me, they saw, okay, they got an 18-year-old kid that can play. And this guy gets pancakes, like, the guy's a, this guy can play. So they went back to the U.S. And uh, Brandon Collier, who does the uh, yeah. Yeah, cool tour, he was my D-tackle, my teammate. And he also chopped it up with me and told me, look, man, this and this and this and this and this. You got to go to the summer school camps. They got to see you there. You might going to get offered if you show them. But you got to do that. You got to go there. Like without that, you just sit in Europe, not doing anything. And um, I graduated from school. My father gave me money for my driver's license. And I took that money and I started to look into flights to go to those camps all by myself. And <laughs> Jared went back to Sacramento and his dad, his little brother was still in the program. His dad was a big time booster of sex state. So he said, like, Coach Spurbeck, we got a kid there you might want to look into. He's in Vienna. He's a big guy. He can play D1. They got my highlight. They called me. And um, I was already planning to go to summer camps. I got an email from Alabama back then. Yeah, you're just a big kid from Vienna. Just stop by. Come to that camp. I wanted to go to Oregon State. I knew a guy there that knew Coach Riley, the head coach. Go he said, the office, I'm telling you, you ain't leaving without a scholarship. And their uh, Liberty University offered me in Virginia. They already had four German players there. They told me, don't come here. It's a Christian school. You might not going to like it. Try to go somewhere else. Don't go D1AA. Try to go D1A so you don't have to transfer down. And then Sacramento State called me. And Coach Spurbeck said, we would like to offer you half a scholarship. 
And I knew back then D1AA can only offer so much and D1A has the full rights. Yeah. And I told pretty much Coach Sperberg, with all due respect, I think I'm better than half a scholarship. I appreciate the offer, but um, I'm not going if it's not a full ride. Like, my parents can't pay for school. And they're like, okay. And I was like, look, anyways, I'm going to Oregon State first. Sacramento State was second on the list of my visits. So if anything, I'm going to go to Corvallis, and then I'm going to come down to Sac. I didn't know that Sac State was playing Oregon State that year. (laughs) I didn't know that. And he told me that, okay, um, I'll call you back in a few hours, all right? So, all right. Put the phone down. And then he called me again and said, look, we're going to offer you a full ride under one condition. You do not visit Oregon State. <sighs> me being naive and 18, not knowing that's an NCAA violation, <laughs> bluffed, bluffed the man out. I bluffed him out and... I was like, after one day, I said, I'm going to call you back in two, three days. Called him back the next day, accepted the offer. Graduated a few weeks later, and in August, I was in camp. Oh, that's, that's a master class right there in negotiation. Look at that. Damn, and dude. Of course, I, that's I had a great story. film because I played for the Vikings. Yeah. Great league. We played Euro Bowl, Berlin, uh, Paris. Uh, I, I was lucky, not only doing all that and being a good player, I was just in the right place at the right time as well. So the Vienna Vikings were the organization where I, I had the chance to improve to that way and become that good to even get a shot at D1. Man, that's an awesome story, bro. And there's like so much determination and just figuring out and making your dream happen. So kudos to you, man. And we got a couple, couple uh, messages in the chat here from you. Uh, or for you, best tackle, but more importantly, best or leader in the ELF. That's from uh, Coach Danny Mitchell, who I think you played for a couple of years ago. Danny, a great guy. Awesome Love you, Coach Mitch. No, Alex is great. <laughs> Mal Chow Milanovic is a beast. Have you? Hey, this guy goes crazy on Twitter. He has great ELF Twitter takes. I would give. I give him a shout out. Uh, Euroball Chow um, on on Twitter there. So. Man, you so that's that's an incredible story and an incredible journey to get yourself to that level and, and play Division One football coming from Vienna. Um, now, can you talk to us a little bit about now coming back to Europe? I know you played in Bosnia a little bit before going to the Vikings. Can you talk a little bit about your European football experience after getting this college football experience? So I came back in 2017. My goal was during doing the, the during the military service to. Um, play for the Vikings and get the title back. The Raiders were back then dominating three, four years in a row. I came back from the U.S. and I said, it's going to stop now. Hell no. No no more Raiders this, no more Raiders that. I don't care. We're we're the capital city and we play a specific kind of football and we're going to come back to that. And um, with Kevin Burke, we won the championship. And 2018, my quarterback from Sac State, Gary Saffron, came to Vienna. So that was another great year. But then I kind of had the feeling I want to, play at least once in my lifetime pro i want to say that i get paid for football and back then austrians in austria for a club team didn't get did not get paid and there was not a way to get paid they don't they haven't done it before they're not going to do it for me now yeah so i told myself all right um let's look out there was brown strike recruiting heavily they flew me out to hanola um i talked to helsinki and other teams and then i ultimately decided going to the helsinki roosters in 2019. Um, that's also why I believe the Austria Finland connection that we have right now is so great and so strong. And um, like I've seen football there, and Finland plays good football. Finland yeah. plays good football. Oh, they play good ball. Yes. So going there, having a new import rule, like eight imports there, all Europeans, Americans, four, four piece, two in offense and two in defense. I loved it. I loved it. So there was competition all over the place. Any good day, anyone can beat anyone in the Wachter Liga. And um, we won the ship with the rules, and I really loved the experience, and I loved the time, and I love Finland and everything about that country. And um, then I'm Corona happened. I was supposed to go to Toronto to the CFL combine after being in Italy and I got invited with Dustin Electrico and yeah a global pandemic hit yeah. so I thought good I'm never gonna play football again I'm 29 and a half about to turn 30 we're locked up in our apartments I have no idea when I'm, if I'm ever gonna play again yeah. and um 
I just kept working out. The the CFL thing didn't happen. They blew it up. They they said two times now we're doing it and then we're not doing it. And I heard about a team in Bosnia in close to the hometown of my parents in the Serbian part of Bosnia, the Republika Srpska, and the capital is Banja Luka. And I was like, get the hell out of here. Bosnian American football, like what? <laughs> Bosnia. They, they had a Zoom call. Yeah, they had a Zoom call between three teams that play in this new league, the Bosnian Football League, and every country in Europe was in lockdown. Nobody played. Nobody. Nobody. And Bosnia did. <laughs> Let's wow. go, I was Bosnia. Like, I was Badass. Like, I'm going there right now. I don't have anything better to do. In Vienna, everything is closed down. Over there, you got restaurants, you got gyms. You can't be out to like 10 p.m. But everything was kind of normal. Like it was like in Dang. Texas. Dang. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm staying here. I'm, st- I'm, I'm hanging out with my grandma. I'm cooking food for her. I go to practices, and then we have like every two weeks we had a game, and it was eight man football. And um, yeah, I gotta tell you, they got big, tall people there. They, they play physical, not a lot of technique. But um, it was a funny little project on the side that I helped. With. <laughs> That's a great story, man. That's a great story. Yeah. Hey, somebody somebody in the chat said that you're the best trash talker in the league as well. Is that pretty accurate? You confirm or deny? I call it uh, psychological warfare. Some <laughs> there is I'm not trying to be like really insulting, going after family or something to try to get in your head. Sure. I'm more specific with specific things. At first, I read you, I see how you tick, and then I try to lure you with my psychological warfare. <laughs> so once I'm once I'm in your head and I sense it, I go for it. Like I'm, my, I think I'm confident enough. No matter how much I piss you off and more aggressive I make you, I think my technique and my physicality and everything else is still good enough, so I can back up that trash talk. Hey, but I- ultimately, yes. There is only one player where I didn't even try, and that was um, Kazim Edebali in the final game. Oh, yeah. Against him. He even said, I expected you talking all this whole time and this, and everyone told me you only talk. And I was like, bro, you're Kazim Edebali. I'm not pissing you off. <laughs> Same like I don't piss Kyle Kitchens off. Kyle Kitchens <laughs> and all, Hey, don't do that. All either. love and good job, bro, on the field. And <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you're, you're smart with it, man. You're tactful with your trash talking. We got some trash talking in the chat right now from Goran Zech. Milanovic can't block me. What do you have to say about that, about Gorgi? <laughs> First of all, Goran Bratemoy, I love you as always. But um, you want to hear a funny story about Goran and me? Me blocking yeah, let's, yeah, let's hear it. So, this whole time we're in contact. How's practice? How your body doing? Everything. Like We're really tight friends. And then we're about to play. And at the game day, I'm like, okay, I hope you blitz off the edge. I hope, because I know your parents are here, everyone's here. I hope. And he was back at still at Wroclaw, so two years ago, the one yeah, before. Two years ago. Yeah. And he did blitz once. He blitzed once. And he came, and I don't know if he did a stutter stat, but I just thought to myself, get your hands on him. Get your hands on him. Don't let him juke you out or something. And I felt like he kind of froze down and then after the game we went to eat dinner with his family and friends and everyone and i sat down and i was like what's up bro what's up bro <laughs> what happened in that moment man i, I wanted some, something something yeah he covers better he covers definitely better <laughs> than he has, hey, he's a safety man brother. you gotta Love be nice to those brother. dbs alexander yeah. man you're uh, a you're a hell of an interviewee man we could talk to you all day sadly we gotta we gotta let you go here uh, last question, real quick. Tell us what can we expect from the Vienna Vikings this year, and how do you feel about the new logo? Ooh, okay, that's the last one. It's still gonna be long. Hold deal with me. Bear with me. <laughs> um, what was the first question? Already forgot. It. What, what can we, we What can we expect from the Vienna Vikings this year? Are you guys gonna be a championship can, level team? Yeah, absolutely. As always, like not without trying to be cocky. That's the expectation here. We already did it once. The expectation is we want to do it again. It was the expectation last year. Um, of course, we go 1-0 every week. We don't look out forward to the championship at the moment, but it's, it's, it's a set standard here. We want to win. So you can expect 
the most stacked roster that the Indiana Vikings have shown so far in regards of talent and players, in my opinion as well, the best yeah. stacked roster. Yeah. You can expect great coaching with our new OC being an Austrian guy, um, Coach Soma, and um, all the other new coaching staff members that Chris Kaleke took care of. Yeah. We're going to get a great coach team. Um, um, you can expect a show like last year it was quite different with always those close games. Yeah, you love close games, but they don't have to be every weekend. Like we're going to come out with a bang. That's the goal. We come out with a bang and we make a statement there. Um, our conference, even though the media and others say it's not so strong, in my opinion, our conference got really well with other teams stacking up. So this is going to be a fun conference to watch with everyone. Fehrwald, Prague, Wroclaw, Berlin. Um, and now uh, also having Zurich as an opponent. I'm very excited for that as well. And um, yeah, you, you can expect the show. And to the second question with the logo, um, I've have, I have found out um, the Vikings need to do something new and they need to improve themselves. Like, the, like you can see the Club Vienna Vikings is a different thing from the franchise. The franchise was built towards uh, people that have a vision. And our owner, Robin Lumsden, is definitely a guy who has that vision. He played football himself. He was a quarterback. He's a player's guy, and he's a guy that makes moves, and he makes things happen. So with the new reinvented logo, new approach to the whole organization, you got to understand, at the Vienna Vikings, we have not only really great facilities, a great gym you can go to, um, all the things a player needs. Like every player has his own brand new refurbished apartment. That's very important. Everyone needs his own space. We're not stacking up together. And it sounds like a little difference to a multi-people apartment. It is. Um, uh, we have um, cool incentives and goodies for players. We have a meal plan here um, that we're trying to establish through the last years and really got it stuck through. Like everything is improving year by year. And that's why also it has to come with a new logo. And we decided for a new logo. I'm going to be honest. At the beginning, I was like, hmm, I don't know. It still grows on me, but I think I'm liking it more and more every day I look at it. Because it is a new identity. You got to be careful with them, friend, with them logos that you use if they're too close to other teams. There are enough teams in our league that have logos that are still very, very close to, for example, NFL teams. You bring yourself in Hell's Kitchen doing that, you know? Yeah. And um, for that now, there is a new brand. They're going to be, does this video have not say? Yeah. They're going to be new horns on our helmet. They're newly designed. They look badass. I approve. I definitely approve. The new unis look badass. Everything is going to come out great. The players like it so far. So, yeah, that's the that's the whole new logo, new logo approach to reinventing the whole franchise itself. And, um, yeah, it's wow. a great place to be here. And... Um, I love, I love, I love this organization, the city, and of course the players do as well. Well, I'm sold. I'm sold on on Vienna. I guess, <laughs> I guess, I guess go play there. Hey, man, you are uh, the the best spokesperson for a team I've ever seen. So, I agree. Uh, yeah, you got to go after after you're done playing, man. You got to go into marketing. Yeah. Okay, Alexander, thank you so much, man, for joining. One of the one of my many talents. Oh, we're losing him a little bit. Get going. Yeah, I see. It's there. It is. All right. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you for having. Yeah. Me. Thanks for being I really here. Appreciate. Being Thanks here. so much, brother. Great yeah. stuff. Good luck this year.